Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, hi everyone there. Welcome back to my course on developing soft skills and personality. This is a course run by IIT Kanpur in uh, NPTEL MOOC. Uh, we are very happy to know that about 15,000 students have registered for this course and uh, most of you have been enjoying this course uh, very well. This week, if you have noted that uh, the main focus is on communication and uh, in this module particularly I would like to focus on telephone communication. I will be discussing in this module on basic telephone skills, but before I start like I always used to do before, I am going to start with a quick recap of what I did in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, I uh, paid lot of attention to active listening. I once again recollected your uh, knowledge on the importance of active listening. I emphasized the fact that successful personal and professional relationships depend much on active listening. You need active listening for gaining knowledge and knowledge itself is power and only with the kind of power that knowledge can give you, you can uh, get whatever you want in your life. Active listening contributes to your job effectiveness, it will determine whether you are indispensable, irreplaceable and then it will help you to retain and go high in your job. It will help you to increase your productivity both at a creative personal level, also at a material level in the company or job wherever you are uh, uh, contributing to. It can overall help you to develop your persuasive as well as negotiation skills which are two important aspects of communication as well as soft skills. In the later part of the lecture, we focused more on the barriers to active listening. Uh, while talking about barriers, I said that we can have two kinds of barriers. One is the physical barriers which are actually caused by the environment such as a problem in acoustics, disturbance from outside. If it is uh, raining heavily, there is thunder outside and then lot of uh, disturbance outside, you may be finding it difficult to pay your attention in the classroom. So, that amounts to physical barriers, but I said that even those things can be minimized if we make technological adjustments or if we shut the door and then make it airtight, we are able to uh, listen to things properly. But the problems are with regard to people related barriers which can be divided into the physiological as well as psychological aspect. Physiological ones are the ones which affect your body such as fever or headache or any stomach pain or any kind of uh, illness that will change your mood or the room is either too hot or too cold which can also affect your uh, uh, mood and attitude. The other aspect which is equally important and uh, if not it is more important is the psychological aspect, the thing that works on your mind such as your love or hate for the person who is uh, giving you a talk. Uh, such as your kind of prejudice against the person. So, all these things can work against as barriers in terms of active listening. I discussed later in detail about certain other aspects of active listening such as inadequate language base, partial listening, disinterestedness or lack of interest in the subject. I emphasize the fact that even if you do not like the person who is giving you a talk or giving you a lecture or is involved in a conversation, show at least interest in the subject, the topic that the person is talking about. Prejudging is another bad habit and which is a deterrent in terms of active listening. Uh, be open, the mind should be open when you are listening to somebody. Hatred or love for the speaker both ways will be harmful. Love for the speaker will make you form positive bias. Hatred will completely make you cut off from whatever topics which are being discussed. Diffidence that is feeling very weak inside will also affect your uh, active listening because you do not want to clarify any doubts and also you always think that you are from 
let's say Hindi medium or Telugu medium or Marathi medium and you think that your language proficiency is so weak, you will not be able to listen to the person in English or you think that your technical vocabulary is so weak and rest of the people are so smart and you will not be able to listen to that. So, that is your diffidence which you need to overcome by uh, replacing that with confidence. Over enthusiasm that is stopping the speaker uh, then and there because you are more enthusiastic in knowing things and you think that you know it and then you try to stop the speaker even if uh, the uh, speaker knows it, but the speaker is bit slow in giving you the idea. So, uh, combined with this is intolerance or impatience. So, you are impatient uh, uh, to let the speaker conclude the talk, you jump and then you try to fill in the blanks that the speaker is leaving. Deep rooted beliefs is uh, uh, the last but not the least uh, um, obstacle that I was discussing in terms of barriers to active listening. So, our own convictions, our own beliefs will create our own mindset and then we will be either going for a cognitive disson dissonance or assonance. Dissonance is the disharmony we create with the speaker in terms of the ideas the speaker is trying to give us. We try to fight, we try to negotiate, we always try to reject it and then we even try to humiliate. Assonance is our likeness for the speaker that is developed because again uh, with regard to our uh, beliefs and then value systems. Positive bias could be dangerous and then I gave you the example of uh, uh, one uh, Hitler fan who wrote very uh, prize worthy item about Hitler and anybody who reads it would think that uh, he is such a very uh, great person with if the person has no idea about the atrocities that was caused by Hitler uh, during the world war. Now, having discussed about this in this module, let us focus on telephone communication and then some basic skills you need to know about uh, communicating using a telephone. Most of the times telephone is one of the devices which are used for communication or rather which is misused for communication or I would like to say that it is one device we abuse it, take it for granted. But when the device was invented by Alexander Graham Bell for the first time and then when he uh, made a call to the then President of the United States. So, the President remarked by saying that uh, maybe uh, this device is interesting no doubt, but uh, uh, I do not know who is going to use this. So, the uh, idea at that time was uh, uh, it was thought that many people will not use it, but you know that it is today not only used, but it is misused, abused and then it has become part and parcel of our life. Now, why is that important in terms of soft skills and personality development? It is important in terms of developing your personality because knowing the way you use phone, knowing how and when you are using a phone will also tell us what kind of person you are. Now, I just want to ask you some probing questions and then you think about these questions and then you reflect on them and then you identify who you are when you are using the telephone. How do you behave? Now, let us start with first set of questions. Why do you call someone on phone? Think about these questions. Why do you call someone on phone? What is it that is making you call somebody on phone? People tell me that they call somebody on phone just when they feel bored. They are just bored and then they want to talk to someone. Nobody is around. So, just to pass time, they call somebody, they just chat. Communications, one main purpose itself is to just to share ideas, just to enjoy the sheer pleasure of communicating with someone. If telephone is used for that, fine. You kill boredom, you enjoy. So, uh, after feeling to someone you like, maybe you feel better. People also use telephone for curiosity. So, you find out why do you use this? Do you use it just for curiosity? Like find out what someone is doing 
sometimes out of curiosity in terms of helping the person or even in terms of harming the person. If you are uh, preparing for a competitive exam, so you are thorough or tomorrow there is an exam, you are very thorough. So, you want to spoil your friend who is preparing for that, you call and then give unwanted information, create interest so that the person gets distracted from that or you actually call and then share some important information. So, out of curiosity also you call somebody. You call uh, someone on phone just because of your insecurity, your own basic insecurity. Both sides, for example, uh, people who are so close between friends, between lovers, between uh, couples, okay, uh, people become nagging. So, we, we say uh, nagging housewife, but we also have the counter uh, suspicious husband. So, both of them use frequently by calling the other person just to check, just to verify where is the person, what is he doing, to whom uh, uh, is he or she making call, verifying and validating. So, one's own security, the other person is imposing it on the other one and then you see what kind of relationship you will be able to maintain using this device. Passing information is another reason why you call someone. It could be good information, it could be bad or it could be simple information, okay, uh, uh, giving some phone number, so giving some details about a job, sharing some information about an advertisement that has come and so on. So, passing information also you call someone. You also come, call someone for sharing good news. Okay. This is one important thing that you call a person and then you share it. You also inform people about events, appointments. So, you call someone and you tell that, oh, oh this is going to start on this day at this time, do not miss it. So, you remind somebody up about an appointment, about a meeting. You also call someone on phone to give bad news. And uh, in the next one, we will just see how you can do this. But right now, I just want you to think about these ones. Why do you call someone on phone? Sometimes to give bad news. Sometimes it is just for discussing ideas. Okay, you study together, you research together or it is just like you are friends and then you keep on sharing ideas. You discuss about that and then you talk for a long time. Sometimes you call a person just for the office routine business matter, telling somebody where the file is kept, telling somebody to bring the file, telling somebody to download something. So, the routine things you just uh, call someone. Sometimes you use the telephone to call for help. So, you find somebody like a thief wandering in your nearby vicinity, you want to alert the security, you want to call the police. So, uh, there is a uh, quarrel, there is a fight, somebody is beating each other, slowly it might become a kind of communal riot. So, you are afraid, you call the police, you call for help, you make a phone. Somebody is uh, uh, lying on the road, so maybe it is a terrible accident. So, you want to call the ambulance, so you call for help. You use telephone for calling for help. You also use telephone for calling for service, like booking tickets, ordering food items. So, why do you call someone on phone and when do you use phone? The calls you make and the way you make those calls, they will tell who you are. So, think about the way you are making and why you do this. Also, keep thinking on whom do you avoid on phone and why. If at all you do not want to make a call, why do not you avoid making a call? And then, uh, if at all you are avoiding someone, who is that person whom you avoid calling on phone? Why? Is that a person who has given loan, the, the money lender who has given you money and then you do not want to call because you are not able to pay the dues? Is uh, your enemy giving a call and then you want to avoid that phone? You want to tell somebody that you are out of home or out of office? You want to tell a lie that you are not available? Is it your neighbor with whom you do not have a good rapport and the person is calling to complain something 
that your tree has grown to the other person's uh, compound and then the leaves are falling and then uh, you are not doing anything about it or any that kind of uh, complaint. Is that the neighbor uh, that you would like to avoid or have you done some misdeeds and then you are afraid of the police, so you would like to avoid any call from the police. You are involved in some kind of activities, maybe a wrongly implicated corruption case, so you are afraid of investigation officer, you are simply afraid of your boss and then you just want to avoid on phone because you do not want to call your boss all the time wherever you are. Are you avoiding phone call from your wife or a relative or a colleague or colleagues in general? Are you avoid, uh, will you avoid phone calls from vendors which most of us do even we try to block calls from vendors because they keep advertising things and we do not like, but then there are people who like even getting those calls, they listen to that patiently and then they decide what items to buy. Are you avoiding calls from clients? Are you avoiding calls from customers? Because again you may be a little bit worried that the customer may come and then give complaints or the customer may be angry that some service is not done. Again if you look at it from this angle, this perspective, you will understand that the calls you avoid and the way you avoid them you use someone to tell that or you look at the missed calls and then you do not pay attention, all these ones will determine who you are. Think about these questions and see how you respond to them. And then the third set of questions that I want you to ponder over or related to, whom do you want to talk to on phone? So, if at all you have to talk to someone and if at all you are longing to talk to someone, all the time uh, as uh, Einstein says time is relative. So, when you talk to someone to whom you long to talk, whom you want to talk, even if you talk for 3 hours, so it passes like 3 minutes, but when it is the boss or someone whom you titus talking, whom you do not want to talk, so 3 minutes will go as 3 hours. So, who is this person? to whom you never mind talking at all. Is it a classmate? Is it a friend? And among friends, uh, schoolmate or uh, close friend or just a new friend, which friend are you interested in talking to? Is that a lover or is it your teacher? Is it your employer? There are uh, Although we figure boss as a kind of uh, a terrifying person, so there are very benevolent employers who facilitate uh, the, their employees in terms of making them realize their potentials. So, there are many uh, employers, many people who actually uh, create a kind of harmonious surrounding and then even the workers want to talk to the employer. Uh, would you like to talk to your boss and then share your problems? There are uh, bosses who are so empathetic and then who even know all the problems at home, the things which are causing stress to the workers and they try to help them in a very benign way to sort the doubt also. Or are you just waiting to talk to your doctor, share some problem and seek some advice? Are you always interested in talking to your mentor who is always trying to help you to groom yourself, help you in your growth, realizing your potential or is there any well-wisher to whom you want to share some good news and then seek more advice? Are you interested in talking to an inspirer? Maybe the person knows that uh, he, she is inspiring you or not knowing it, but you would like to talk to the person. If you are uh, somebody like a doctor or someone or at a higher position, would you like to talk to your patient and then share some concerns or would you like to talk to your student who needs your help if you are a teacher or somebody who is in the education lane? 
would you just want to talk to an astrologer? Many people would like to even begin their day talking to an astrologer or a happy event in the home or something bad happened, they would like to talk to the astrologer or are you interested in just talking to a stranger? So, today uh, people are even interested in calling someone whom they do not know, they just want to build up relationships. So, they pick some number, randomly they call, even they make right relationships by making wrong calls. So, are you trying to take your chance by calling a stranger? Overall, the people you want to talk and the way you talk to them, again it will tell who you are. So, think about these questions, who are your uh, favorites with whom you want to talk to? Now, let us look at why phone calls are important. When I was thinking about it, I realized that there are very interesting and paradoxical reasons. Now, paradoxical reasons, a paradox seems to be a very contradictory thing, but then it makes sense when you look at them and put them together in a context. Look at some of the paradoxes uh, uh, with regard to use of telephone and with regard to how it is used uh, in terms of human communication. So, phone calls generally if you look at it, they connect us to people. Okay. So, they make this connections possible. They make the human communication warm and alive but they can also disconnect people. How many times we just slam the phone down and then we say something angrily, we do not want to talk to the person, we just shout at the person, we yell at the person and even multiple calls, numerous calls have been made. So, we completely disconnect from the person. Is that not a paradox? Phone is helping you to connect, phone is helping you to disconnect and then you leave some of these people cold and uncared for. When you do not want to talk to someone, they are completely disconnected and you do not care how cold, how uncared and how unsympathetic they feel. And then while there are some who hate calling some people, there are others who love to get calls from them. It is another paradoxical thing. So, there are some who do not want to call some people thinking that uh, they do not make any sense. But those people are actually looking and waiting for the calls from these ones. Now, uh, this even uh, situations like uh, sometimes children who are uh, uh, settled in far away places and then uh, parents and then grandparents waiting for a call. Children thinking that in a busy uh, schedule, they do not have time to uh, make them call or even tell them very trivial things which are happening to happening to them. Whereas, the parents as well as grandparents are waiting just to hear one small trivial information from them which would make them very happy. So, this is a paradoxical thing. A phone call could have avoided many suicides. I have heard of people telling that uh, uh, somebody talked to them at the right moment and then uh, it helped them change their mind. A similar incident is quoted by Albert Camus in the novel The Fall. So, uh, there is a person who uh, suddenly premeditates suicide with the realization that uh, there is nobody who would really call him or uh, feel emotionally attached and he thinks that uh, it is a, it's a uh, paradoxical thing again that the day in which the person wanted to commit suicide is the day no friend makes a call to him. So, again implying that if only one friend, if only one family member had called him, maybe he would have avoided uh, committing suicide. Now, phone calls can give you life, phone calls can make you commit suicide by not making it in the important time. So, not making a call could have made many uh, people live happy lives making call can also make people live happy lives. So, hence it is important to use phone calls wisely and effectively. So, overall I would say that phone calls are important aspect of human communication, 
you can make or you can more it. So, the way you use it, it is going to tell about your personality, it is determining your personality. It has become a very integral part of human communication and today we cannot do without it. In the coming uh, lecture, I am going to tell you how we are also by extension using mobile. Okay. And then before I go to mobile, I will also try to tell you some professional way of handling uh, telephone. Now, some basic skills before I go to the professional skills in the next one. Basic skills for using telephone, as I said many of you may be implicitly using it, but I would suggest you try to learn to use it overtly. You understand why you are using it. First you understand that telephone is different from oral communication that is person to person or from individual to individual face to face. The way you talk to a person face to face is different from the way you talk to somebody on phone. Now, this is important because face to face when you talk to someone, you can always modulate your expressions depending on what the other person is feeling. You can stop your communication, you can extend your communication depending on the interest or depending on the disinterest of the person who is just sitting before you. But on a phone, you do not have a clue okay, on the one hand, but on the other hand, you can also take some clues only based on the way the person is expressing his or her verbal uh, base of communicating his or her ideas. Now, keeping this in mind, Remember, you have to use telephone very carefully. It is believed that if you, if you completely want to avoid someone face to face, you still you can use a uh, telephone, but then when you use it, you have to use it very discreetly. Now, if somebody is making you a call, a call that is very important and the person is going to give you some information and you need to note it down. Now, if you are not prepared, ask the person to call again, so that you be prepared with the notebook, you can note it down or you are, you are just driving or you are just eating something or you are just attending to some guests. Now, do not do two, three things, especially when you have to talk to someone on phone, avoid that, be focused. Keep a pen and paper, if uh, uh, again, even if it is a personal call. So, keep the pen and paper just near your uh, telephone or a small notebook, memo note where you can note small points at least. Even in a personal call, do not miss important point, especially somebody telling you that you call someone and pass the information or you do this for them. So, note that in your to do list, especially with regard to numbers, if they are giving you a number. So, note it not noting it, making one error in terms of number is going to become very harmful. If you are the right handed one, place the phone on the left side and use the right side for notes. On the right side, you keep a notepad or a small notebook and then there you uh, take notes quickly. So, that left side you can uh, take the receiver and listen to the person and generally it is also uh, suggested uh, even uh, scientifically that you use the left ear generally for uh, listening, avoid uh, using the right one. So, that is the suggestion given. So, try to do that and use the right hand for taking notes and smile or show that you are cheerful. Now, when you smile, your voice will be different when you do that and even the other person can feel that you are smiling and making the other person feel comfortable and feel happy about the call. Be patient. if. Uh, uh, the other person has made the call, be patient till the person winds up the call. Do not rush to complete unless you have a very emergent thing to do, in which case you can politely tell that there is an important thing, an appointment or a class or an important event that you need to attend to and then you can tell that politely. In terms of time, keep an eye on it, but do not rush as I said. And if the other person is making the call and then the person is trying to speak, 
Remember the tips I gave you about active listening. Make the other person speak. So, you do not interrupt frequently, so that the other person feels frozen. So, and then uh, you do not do all the communication, do not make it one way, okay, make it a two way communication. And the other side, you be calm and comforting, so that the other person talks to you more. Never lose your temper, even if the other person is trying to provoke you or say something provocative or pass an information about you, a gossip this person heard about it and then do not lose your temper, at least on phone, do not do this. Do not eat or chew, for example, chewing gum or munching something when somebody is talking to you. It is impolite, it is also not showing that you are having cultured behavior. You can excuse somebody to finish it quickly or you just stop eating and then talk to the other person. And if you have to go back, you also tell the person that you have just stopped eating just to listen to the person. The person can come back to you after you finish eating or if it is an important one, you just pay attention quickly and then wind up the call and continue with your eating. Do not do both together, chewing, munching, eating and then the noise that you make while you chew and you are not able to even say something correctly. There is high probability of miscommunication. You say a number or an important thing, the other person is not able to hear it. Stop reading if a phone call comes. So, you are in the middle of reading a very interesting novel and who done it kind of thing and the next page the most important suspense is going to be revealed. So, your mind is there, but the phone call has come. Pass, close the book, continue with the call. If the phone call comes when you are typing something on your uh, computer or on your laptop, do not do both. Stop typing, again pay attention to the call. Give verbal encouragements when you do that because the other person is not visible to you and even in your case, you have to realize that now it is not a face to face communication. The other person can understand that you are listening only if you are able to give some verbal encouragement. You can say for example, I see, tell me more, go on, would you like to talk about it, please continue go ahead. So, these verbal encouragements will make the other person to continue and then say more about it. Now, these are some basic telephone uh, skills and then uh, uh, there are some basic things which you generally take for granted, but I should tell you before I conclude this. The courteous things like asking polite, uh, pleasant remarks such as hello, how are you? how do you do and then saying please, thank you and then again uh, when the person is uh, uh, saying thank you first, saying that welcome or uh, you are most welcome and then winding up with some kind of uh, uh, note of hope like I would like to see you on this day, let us meet in the uh, party tomorrow or look forward to get call from you again. So, these things are basic, but then again I am just re-emphasizing. So, please thank you, sorry and these are overall uh, soft skills uh, etiquette that you need to have and more important in telephone skills. We will be looking at more in the next one, but just want to conclude with a thought from one famous novelist and journalist. Look at this, again he also tries to point out the paradox of using telephone. People used what they called a telephone because they hated being close together and they were scared of being alone. So, they hated being close together, so they use phone, but they were also scared of being alone. So, they do not want also to be left out. So, phone as I said is something that bridges the gap, but it can also create the gap. It depends on the user, you, how you use it, you can bridge or you can close the communication network. So, decide how you are going to do this, go through the video once again, ponder over the questions that I asked and assess your personality in terms of the phone that you are using. Where are you? Are you the ones people want to run away from? Are you the ones whose calls people are avoiding or is that you people always love to hear? 
If not, what should you do to make you that person, so that always people want to talk to you, always people want to listen to you. Next lecture, again we will give you more tips on be becoming a professional telephone uh, user. Until then, I say thank you and thank you so much for watching this video. Have a nice day.